This PRS on Zara 50 came in and the owner's son, I guess the son is the owner, but the man who dropped it off, uh, it's his son's app. And he said the app's been sounding great for a long time, then suddenly it stopped sounding great. And I was prepared to put this here on the bench and uh, power it on and see what the problem was. Uh, might just be a preamp tube, whatever, no real repair necessary. And I always like to uh, set all the knobs to noon before I do anything and make sure the master volumes, if present, aren't blasting before I put it up on the bench like this, you know, right in front of my ears. And in the process, I discovered that some of the knobs are tight and some of the knobs are not. And that means that the pot itself beneath the knob is not. And crucially, this master volume over here, it's got the bag case, the wiggles. So does this treble pot. All these things in the reverb pot there could explain the issue. I've been criticized in the past because what seems like a simple problem, I open up the amp and check everything. And people have accused me of, you know, padding bills and stuff. I wish these people would actually listen to what I say in those videos where I explain why you have to go to the next level. I could take all these knobs off and tighten them all up from the front and cross my fingers if the problem is fixed. But uh, first of all, you never want to tighten a pot unless you can secure it from the other side because you can really mess things up. Second of all, because these have been so loose and wiggly, I bet those solder joints on the board on the other side need some TLC. Those are probably either broken or are stressed to the point where they're on the verge of it. If the solder joint is not there, the signal is not there. So let me take this uh, chassis out of the cabinet so I can have access to get the knobs off and then we'll tighten everything up and check the solder joints and all that fun stuff. Apparently PRS used some Loctite on the threads of the little hex screws that hold the knobs on. It makes it really hard to get them loose. Let's see if I can try it from a different angle. You know, and that would be fine. I wish they had also used uh, Loctite if they're going to on the hardware that holds the pots tight because they're all very loose. You can see there that nuts vibrated all the way out. Two of the four screws that hold the chassis to the cabinet were also very loose. Here I'm wiggling the uh, one of the pots, this is the volume pot, the master volume pot, and you can see that the right lug there is, and the middle one are just lifting out of the board. Those are broken solder joints. That's why I don't just tighten from the front. Overall, this seems like a much, much better constructed build than their earlier models, like the two channel C and two channel H that I've had, which were really, really terrible in a lot of ways. I've discussed it. I don't want to tear PRS down for what they did in the past if they're doing something right now. So this all looks quite good. I'm going to take all the hardware off the front panel and see if this board just has enough room to slide out for me to access the bottoms of the, of the pot connections without removing the entire board. Check back in a second. Well, I was wrong. The solder joint did not, in fact, break. The pot did. You can see that gap there so those two lugs have just snapped good news is it's a fairly easy pot to change out better news is a new one of these costs two dollars and fifty cents so a uh, new one of these on order and the 250k audio for the treble that's on order as well just in case this was affected by its time in the flex zone well the pots came out with no problems the pads are just big enough and the through holes are rugged enough. Nothing got torn up, which is sometimes an issue with modern PCBs that aren't designed for service. So that's a good thing. This was the one that was broken, the one meg that was broken. And this 250K for the treble had just been flexed enough that I don't trust it. So I've got some new ones to go back in place and I'll solder them in. And they're exactly the same as the originals. The, the new 250K with a little came with a little plastic dust cap. But let me solder these in place then put everything back together. On that note, this is a fairly easy board to pull for service. You just remove the tubes, you remove the screws holding this board in place, and then you just have enough room to push this board back to get this POTS board out without disconnecting anything major. So kudos to the designers at PRS for designing this amp to be serviceable. Wish more of your colleagues would follow suit. Well, I got it mostly back together and powered it up and, and the POTS all work now, but, Hear that buzz? That's on the clean channel. It's affected by the master volume. It's not affected by the preamp volume. And it gets worse if I pull V1. But if I tap on the rightmost power tube, that tube is very, very, very bad. 
And I think that's what pretty much directly causes that buzz. Let me explain. Let me power this off so we don't have to hear that. But uh, when power tubes fail, you can't see it in the shot, but that's all right. Uh, sometimes they can do things to the heater supply that you don't want done to your heater supply. And here's the heater supply here. Here's the, the secondaries coming off the power transformer. Some f unnecessary fuses that they have put in there for EU codes. The heater balance resistors. And then it goes off to uh, all the preamp tubes but V1, which has a DC supply. And it goes off here to the power tubes. But it also goes through these diodes, which form a bridge to do a positive and negative DC with these filter caps on them. And I don't think these filter caps are the problem. I think that these diodes were stressed by something going wrong with that power tube. And I measure those diodes, and indeed, in having, instead of having like 0.6 volts in one direction and nothing in the other direction, I've got uh, weird voltages in both directions. So I know that at the very least we have four bad diodes. Good news is diodes are cheap, and I've got lots of four, in, one in 4,000 sevens. Bad news is I've got to take everything apart and pull the board again to flip it up so I can safely disconnect them and you know remove them and swap them out without damaging the uh, traces on the bottom. And before I do that, though, I've got to get in here with like an X-Acto and cut away some of the silicone, which is covering up this part of the lead and the pad on this diode. Uh, I'm not a big fan of glue covering other components, but such is my lot in life. All right, it's all pulled out and put back together again. Uh, new diodes here. Put the new ones slightly up above the board and all that buzz is gone. A little bit of static noise in the background. I suspect that some of the uh, preamp tubes are less than optimal. I will talk to the owner to see if he wants me to take care of that. I think he might be on the verge of selling this amp once it is safe to sell. I've got a pair of JJ EL 34Ls in there and I'm going to bias it up before I put it all the way back together and put on the knobs. You'll get a chance to hear this, uh, whether or not I do that, deal with that last rushing water preamp noise or anything, but uh, uh, you know, the amp is working, so much, much better than it was with broken pots and uh, blown out diodes. Let's turn it off for now and I'll get on to the next steps of setting the bias.